peace and blessings. My name is Monisha Skuman. Uh, I'm also known as Eavesdrop. I am a poet MC. I'm also a playwright and an actor and a theater producer. And I come all the way from Cape Town, South Africa. I come from the ghettos. I come from what's known as the Cape Flats. And it has played a huge role in informing who I am, not just as a human being, but as an artist specifically. And my history and my heritage has also informed greatly the kind of content I choose to produce and the kind of subject or concept that I decide or choose to work with. I would say that I've been working in theater for about two and a half years now, uh, which is when I took the leap. So I've been a poet MC for quite some time, but I decided to move into theater, which was actually my first love right from the time that I finished school, high school, which is more than 20 years ago. But because of circumstance, I, I never could get to where I wanted to be in terms of starting to work in theater and, and writing plays, etc. And so I've, I've finally managed to produce um, my first theater play called Memory is a Weapon. It was very exciting to have finally been able to receive some assistance to write the actual story and then to develop it to make it ready for theater. And of course, with the last two years, two and a half years, having been an interesting time with, with the pandemic and COVID-19 and lots of restrictions and lots of lockdown, you know, preventing interaction and development and movement and, and all of those things. So it's been quite a, a challenging process, but what has been important for me is regardless of the challenges, to be able to put the work out because my work speaks very strongly about the struggle of my people, the struggle of people of color, the struggle of indigenous people, the struggle of, of women as well, the struggle of being black and African in this world, in my country, historically, currently, and how people who come from marginalized communities, oftentimes the indigenous people of those very spaces in which they're marginalized, how those people are criminalized by the media, criminalized by the system, essentially. And you'll find that most of the time, the reason why these people are stereotyped as criminals is mostly because they don't have as much materially. So that really drives me in my process, in what I choose to speak about as an artist. So I consider myself somewhat of a rebellious artist in that sense that I'm asking questions that might not be comfortable even for me to ask, let alone for an audience member or a participant to receive and sit with. And so I've always really been driven by finding a voice and I've always really been driven by providing a platform to speak some of the stories that are spoken about us but this time from us and for us. For me when creating my work it is very important that I have space and solitude to be able to connect spiritually because for me creating new work is a spiritual practice too so it's very important for me to have solitude when I create my work especially right in the beginning so that I can visualize dream uninterruptedly but also connect to my ancestors through prayer and ask them to guide me in which stories need to be told and in which way to tell those stories, which mediums to use, which platforms to try and access to tell those stories. So solitude is very important in my creative process, especially when it comes to writing. I need a clear mind. I need limited interruption so that I can really just hear and focus and then take the work from what I hear in my head to what, I, what I'd like to see on paper and then to work with that in various stages. And I think 
another part of my process, which is a little bit later down the line, is for me then to spend some time doing observation work. Because I write about and for people, it is important for me to be in contact with people as well and to be able to have the space to observe people so that I can pick up information that might not be communicated verbally, but so that I can look at body language, so that I can study, you know, interaction. And then another part of my my creative process is the part that is collaborative, the part that is, you know, I, I enjoy the process of workshopping. I enjoy having the opportunity, if I'm going to work with other actors, for an example, or other artists of different disciplines like dancers, then I like to have some sort of collaborative process where we sit down, I introduce the concept, I share what I have, I give a little bit of background and context, and then I like that people weigh in so that they feel connected and represented by the work that they're going to be presenting on stage or however in a performance. Peace and blessings. My name is Eavesdrop.